So it's been just under a year since Fortnite's Big Bang event, when we all know Epic added all the new metaverse modes. Lego Fortnite, a full-on survival or creative sandbox game inside Fortnite. Another one they added was Fortnite Festival, a Guitar Hero inspired mode developed by Harmonix, the same people behind Rock Band. And lastly, Rocket Racing, a Rocket League racing game. And then later on, Epic introduced more metaverse modes, like Fall Guys, which is just Fall Guys but in Fortnite, and more recently, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But as we all know, something went bad with all of these modes. Look at the player bases and they're not really bringing in as many players as they used to. And in the case of LEGO Fortnite, millions of players when it launched. Okay, I know you can say this is how player bases work. There's always going to be an inevitable drop off. It happens to every single game. Before a game like Fortnite, where the player base is pretty consistent, where there's up to 30 million players playing every single day, especially with the giant peak near the Big Bang event at 11 million players. Since then, there, there hasn't been a steep decline in basically the entire player base since then. Almost like all of this metaverse stuff really didn't really have an effect in the long run. Now, um, you're probably wondering, <laughs> why did Fortnite's metaverse, or more, more specifically Tim Sweeney's metaverse, in layman's terms, fall off? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. And no, it's not because the modes are bad. It's more of a deeper, systemic issue with Fortnite, and the rift between Epic's vision and the community's vision of the future of the game. Now, I'm gonna go pretty in-depth in this video on absolutely everything. Now, just to let everybody know, this video is not me ripping into the metaverse for however long, but I'm going to give it an objective analysis, all right? To get a solid answer of why Fortnite's metaverse really went south. So, I recommend grabbing a snack. Let's get to it. Okay, let's just start off with the obvious. This whole idea of a metaverse has really been contentious for quite a while, even before Fortnite even tried to do it. We all know when Mark Zuckerberg tried to do it with meta, which eventually led to be with whatever this is. Now, the actual term metaverse really doesn't have a solid definition probably the best source for it would be Tim Sweeney himself because you know he's he it's, it's his version of the metaverse where right now Fortnite's becoming and if you don't know who Tim Sweeney is he's the guy who literally owns Epic Games but anyways he says it like this a metaverse is essentially just an online social entertainment experience in a real-time 3d setting you and your friends going around having fun together in a 3d world okay so online social entertainment with friends blah 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 sounds a lot like Fortnite to me but keep in mind Tim doesn't just mean entertainment of just battle royale. We all know entertainment has a wider meaning here, which you know includes survival modes, racing modes, rhythm games, digital concerts, save the world I guess that into, and hundreds of outside brands inside of Fortnite, like Epic's own IPs, Disney, recently Paramount, and beyond. And of course the backbone of all of this is UGC or user generated content, aka creative islands and UEFN experiences, created by creators out there. Okay, this whole metaverse thing might seem like a more of a newer concept, but really in reality, what we're playing today is more of the early stages of Epic's true vision of what Fortnite would have been. Take it from the former chief creative officer, good old Donald Mustard. You know, the same Donald Mustard behind the entire storyline of Fortnite, and really most of the creative decisions up until his departure from uh, Epic around chapter 4 of season 4, right before uh, the whole metaverse and everything. It was he who came up <laughs> with Fortnite, not just being a battle royale, but a hub for different multiple experiences like music, survival, what have you. He was the one who planted the seeds for the whole metaverse idea, or in his words, the true vision of Fortnite. But just because this was a true vision doesn't mean it executed the way he wanted it to. Now the reason why he left was because he felt as if all of Epic's resources were spread thin and were put into other places, leading to things that mattered the most in Fortnite, like live events, to be put on the wayside. And it was really devastating to him because, and I quote, this is actually the magic. Not everyone at Epic agrees with that. And this leads me to the next part of the video. This isn't the Fortnite I fell in love with. Now this is what a lot of people say, or at least a generalized paraphrase of what people say. Now just for some context, some background, to, to me if you don't know who I am, I'm, I'm a Fortnite island creator who has been making games in Fortnite since 2018, when creative mode first came out. And I've seen with all of you how this game has changed over time. Now even with how deeply I'm in this whole metaverse thing, my entire channel would even exist if it wasn't for UFN. Even though that's the case, I do get what this means. I first started playing Fortnite in December 2017. I wear the Reaper skin because it was actually the first legendary skin I ever got in as a tier 100 in the season 3 battle pass as you all know. And you cannot deny the charm the game had back then. Everyone was playing it. And I mean everyone. I have so many memories. I remember playing as Thanos for the first time. I remember counting the days up to a Fortnite live event. I remember psychoanalyzing all the teasers for each season. I remember the little... 
I'm crawling across the ground. I remember the music. Fortnite Mares music, the holiday music. It's so engraved in my mind. But what I also remember is the growing amount of collabs in Fortnite. The community whining more and more about each update. Lockdown in 2020 with months without anything except a harpoon gun. I remember all of that too, but I enjoyed it all the same. Now, okay, I know I can glaze OG Fortnite as long as I want, but to, but to get to the point, this isn't the Fortnite I fell in love with. And a lot of people share that same sentiment, including Donald Mustard. There's just too much change, too fast anyway. Where are the core things that made Fortnite what it is to a lot of people? The graphics? Gone. Live events? Well, they're, they're still here, but you know, they, they don't hit the same. If you got someone from 2017 and time traveled them to now, they wouldn't even think this is the same game. And that's right, it's not the same game. Fortnite is wildly different today than it was back a few years ago. There's now a huge focus on Discover and UGC content. There's even more collabs than ever before. The UI is completely different. The gameplay is completely different. And the story is really just a shell of its former self. As you know, the man behind it is now gone. Even from my Fortnite Creator Island perspective, Fortnite Creative is now UEFN and it's completely different to what I used to know and what I'm familiar with. It's not the same as it was. Sure, you can still play Creative 1.0, but it just isn't the same anymore. Now, back to the quote. This isn't the Fortnite I fell in love with. Thing is, is that change is a part of life. A part of growing up. I guess as humans, we evolve to enjoy stagnation and conformity. We don't like change. And when it happens, it's very uncomfortable. And even worse, when it doesn't align to what you believe. It can be really frustrating seeing something you previously loved change into something you believe is worse over a long period of time. This is one of the big reasons why Fortnite's metaverse didn't do as well or is perceived badly. People also have a really big disdain for the metaverse as they believe the metaverse took away from aspects of like the core game I was like Battle Royale. Funnily enough, Tim Sweeney himself at Unreal Fest 2024 admitted that the metaverse is one of the big reasons why people don't like the game right now. You know, uh, some people when they hear the word metaverse, they think of what Facebook is doing with VR and now AR. Some people use the metaverse to describe everything they don't like about the current Fortnite season. Um, but really, what about these new modes are the issue here? They seem to do really good in the first few weeks, but player counts are in the dumps. Literally, Rocket Racing like, has, has lost his seasonal updates and is getting deprecated. So what happened? To figure this out, let's diagnose each issue with each mode to figure out really what went wrong. First up, LEGO Fortnite. Now, this was the most successful mode with millions of players playing it. Now, LEGO Fortnite, um, even though... It's pretty fun. And the gameplay is fun. It's nice, man. Yeah, I like the building. The building's really good. The problem with it is that sadly, it didn't really have any depth at all. It, it definitely had the most depth out of all the modes, but still, it wasn't enough. <laughs> there was some progression at first, but it got repetitive fast, and it really didn't have that much priority when it came to its gameplay or combat mechanics. Now, this would have been fine if LEGO Fortnite got constantly updated with new things every week to really build upon the launch version, but there was no real actual full on combat content updates for months, and by then, the novelty already kind of worn off. Now actually, there actually was content being released, but it came in the form of overpriced kits sold in the item shop, which I don't know about you, but I never bought. Next up is Rocket Racing, and Rocket Racing, when it came out, was the least played mode, which made it off to a rough start. I think the issue with Rocket Racing, like LEGO Fortnite, as you're going to see this as a constant theme here, it is the lack of depth to its like gameplay. It launched with a handful of maps, overpriced cosmetics, and gameplay that failed to really reach the target audiences it was going for, which were Rocket League fans and with a bit of racing game people in there. It just didn't hit the mark with either of them. And of course, a lot of bugs, and I mean a lot of bugs, and a lot of poor updates that failed to iterate on the gameplay loop to add maybe just a small amount of, you know, variety to the game mode. Now, as I said just a few days ago, Epic did announce that seasonal updates are gone, and it's going to just be more scattered updates from now on. Now this is pretty much close to what they said about Save the World and how that went, so this doesn't look good for Rocket Racing. Now, now does this signal the end of the metaverse? I'm gonna go into that more later. The last mode to launch was Festival, the Rock Band Guitar Hero mode. And again, we all know the story. Lack of depth, lack of updates, overpriced cosmetics, in the form of jam tracks, blah blah blah, you get me. Sure, uh, Metallica was cool though. Anyways, even afterwards, Fall Guys was added to UBFN and later Fortnite back in August. And even that fell to the same exact issues. Lack of depth, lack of updates, what have you. 
And looking into the future, soon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will fully release in November, and in about a year or two, Disney will begin their whole integration. But I have an inkling, if Epic Games doesn't really change their ways, it's going to have the same fate as all of these modes. Now, okay, if you can't tell the pattern here, it really comes down to shallow gameplay in comparison to other modes, combined with the lack of substantial updates in a short period of time, plus kind of overpriced cosmetics, really led to the downfall of, of, the, of the first three modes that came out. Now, despite me saying that, these modes aren't bad. I, I actually really enjoyed playing all of them. There's just not a lot to sink your teeth into, and there's not really that much of a reason to keep playing them. Now, this brings me on to my next point. Epic can see the future, we can't. I think a big disconnect with the player base and the game, and with Epic's decision making, is that we can't see the future. We have literally no idea what Epic is going to do next. You know, except for the, you know, that, but... And it's not surprising that people are just completely confused about the changes to the game, like Discover, or the Locker and the Shop, etc, etc. A lot of things that Epic do really make no sense whatsoever to a normal average player of the game. Even from my and most likely a lot of you watching my Fortnite creator perspective, a lot of things Epic has done still really makes no sense to me. Now, in reality, Epic is actively working and evolving the game into this vision of a metaverse they had a few years ago. And the reality is that this process isn't going to be completely ready in one update. The Big Bang and Chapter 5 was really at the kickstart to this whole metaverse. It was Epic's first and definitely not their last attempt at uh, pushing this whole idea of Fortnite being a platform to a wider and more generalized audience. The people that wouldn't really play Fortnite, or at least the Fortnite that the general public would know for Royale, save the world and the rest. And of course, what brings eyes to the game? Live events. That's what they did in the Big Bang. Now, the reason why you may not like the metaverse is because literally all of these modes weren't designed for you in mind. And by you, I mean the people who want to just play Battle Royale. I'm not saying that uh, you can't like these modes if you play Battle Royale. You, of course, you can like Battle Royale and these modes. People out there do exist. I'm saying the reason why you might not like it is most likely because Epic wasn't thinking about you when they made it. These modes are designed to bring in new players. Epic are actively attempting to grow the overall player base of the game. Now, another thing that you might not know about is since July this year, they are paying creators more to engage newer players rather than the current player base. What this means is that creators are more incentivized to bring in newer players that haven't played the game or haven't played in a while rather than the current player base. Epic wants new people in the game, because just look at the results of it. But the issue though with bringing in new players is that the game slash platform of Fortnite and its current community and Epic 2 just weren't ready. The reason why this whole metaverse failed was more of a system systemic issue with the game, not the modes being bad or something like that. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Let me break it all down. Case number one, Discover. When these new modes came out, UFN has already been out about nine months or so, and Discover for the past few years have been, has been worked on, but really at the time when the metaverse launched, Discover and UEFN was not ready at all. At least not to the point to support a ginormous influx of new and old players who were expecting a metaverse. What do I mean by this? Epic wants to rely mostly on UGC or user-generated content to maintain the content flow and grow the player base of the game, and this content either created by independent creators or entire dev teams. Now these modes were designed to attract new players into the ecosystem, but after all these players had their fun with these modes, and since these new players, let's say, don't want to play Battle Royale or pay for Save the World, but they, but they still want to play Fortnite, they, they need to look somewhere else to play more. But when they look somewhere else, they can't find the same quality experiences really anywhere, as this silver is filled with absolute brain rot that has been designed and perfected to exploit the Discover algorithm and only engage the current player base of the game. Don't get me wrong, amazing maps are out there, but Discover rarely promotes that. Creators don't have the same level of tools and are locked out of many features in UEFN that can limit really what they can make for the ecosystem. So no wonder the mass majority of creators gravitate to barely innovative content and is copy and pasted, as what is the point of making something good when you can just put minimal effort into something bad? 
bad and get massively more rewarded for it than if you were to make something actually innovative. Larger companies also don't want to enter the ecosystem as they see it as inferior to what's already out there, which they are 100% right about. And also, the rampant IP infringement, creator role breaches that just don't get solved lead to more and more of these developers becoming not interested in developing in Fortnite and expanding this metaverse to the idea of what Epic would want, and most likely to everyone who thinks the metaverse failed, to what they would think ideally of what they would want out of a metaverse. And so what do these devs do? They don't bother developing in the ecosystem and just don't care. And then what do these new players that are hungry for new content do? That is in this, they leave and play something else because again, they just don't care. Now, why do all of these 1v1 maps, box fights, and combat maps that generally include building get thousands of players when the new modes dwindle off with a fraction of the players? It's because of the underlying systems of Discover, the backbone of the metaverse, is deliberately built to serve only the current player base of the game. Not new players who want to play maybe something different than what's usual. It is no surprise that the player race of Fortnite has dwindled over the past year. Back to the same numbers that we had before this whole metaverse thing. It's because of the new players having nothing to play and leaving, it's because of the systems in place like Discover, and also because of UEFA's current state limiting creators from making what they really want to make. Now I'm going to talk about later how Epic will fix this, let me continue. Case number two, the locker and the shop. This is another major issue. The locker and the shop were always updated to support all the new overpriced cosmetics from all the new modes. But again, all of this then, and still now I guess, felt extremely rushed. It felt like a downgrade. If you don't know, the, the reason why they changed all the UI and stuff like that is A to support all the new cosmetics like the cars, the, the jam tracks, the Lego styles, what have you. And B to simplify the game's menus as Fortnite isn't just the battle royale anymore it's a platform and i think the more sleek design in epic's eyes is to support the fact that there now can be many different styles and game types like fortnite modes and even modes that don't even look like fortnite epic did this to get rid of the idea that you're playing fortnite the game and that you're actually now playing fortnite the platform metaverse thing you what have you now the shop unlocker the ui and whatever it's just another thing that just adds onto the pile of things that have gone against the idea of what Fortnite was. What I'm getting at here is that the metaverse, when it came out, was already kind of doomed to begin with, or at least in the long term, it wouldn't be sustainable. Which leads to the idea of this whole metaverse quote unquote falling off. Now these modes weren't going to be the messiah that was <laughs> Battle Royale, and they won't ever be. As I said, these are more to get the eyes of the players who have never really played Fortnite, or used to play Fortnite, what Fortnite can possibly be. It's just that those eyes weren't focused long enough due to the state of the UGC content you can find and discover. And of course, one of the biggest reasons why people hate the metaverse is case number three, alienating old and current players of Battle Royale. People are used to Fortnite only being mainly at Battle Royale, and of course Battle Royale getting all of the attention. Where Epic failed was not supporting that massive community during this period of creating the metaverse. They put all their cards for a time into the metaverse to kickstart it, leaving Battle Royale not to rot, but slightly neglected. But still, slightly is enough to make people feel that the mode that they love and want to be updated so they can keep on enjoying it may not be getting as much as attention as it usually is, which may lead to less and less updates until Battle Royale is completely shut down forever. Now, is this gonna happen? No, of course not. It isn't gonna happen. Epic just needed to use more resources to build UA and build all the systems to support the metaverse. Chances are, eventually, when the systems are put in place and they're, 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 they're pretty much done, but they still need a few tweaks, but, 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 but they're pretty much ready, Battle Royale will most likely begin to get more and more updates of the same quality we had before. For example, Chapter 4 had no events at all because that was when they were going all in on the metaverse. But look at Chapter 5, we're getting mini events. Fortnite Merits as of late has been the best in years. It's definitely getting better and better. Battle Royale is not dying at all. If anything, it's getting slowly back on its feet. Now, another thing I've seen is this idea that, <laughs> that since the metaverse didn't go as well, Epic is gonna pack it all up and pull a blizzard and give up on their vision of the game. But Epic isn't going to stop. One of the big examples for this as of late is the slowing down of Rocket Racing Season updates like I said before. Now these modes aren't the end all be all, there will be 100% more, either Battle Royale related or not. Now a good example of this would be Reload. Reload was a prime example of a great halfway point between getting Battle Royale players to start playing and getting into a wider metaverse modes, and also attract outside slash older players with something new. Epic stuck a really good balance with it and you can see you can see it's working, and, and likely Epic aren't going to give up anytime soon. 
soon. Rocket Racing may be getting slowly deprecated, that doesn't mean they won't be working on more modes, which will do what they try to do better in the future. This whole idea of Epic stopping the metaverse this deep into it is kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. So Epic won't stop. They'll listen to the player base, iterate, and make the metaverse better. They didn't do a good job of it as for, at first, but I think Epic might have learned a lesson or two about how to set this up. And when Chapter 6 comes out, it's going to be big push attempt number 2. Now finally in this video, what's next? Discover when Chapter 6 comes out, it's confirmed to be about December the 1st, it's getting a massive update. With being able to favorites and follow what the, the favorite creators are making. New maps from your favorite and follow creators, and also updates will be shown to you either in your library or in your dedicated creator follow creators discovery realm. Not just new releases. Smaller creators can now slowly build an audience in game with favorite creator finally. Plus there will be new collections which will be replacing the rows of random maps where smaller audiences are now separated from the giant, uh, you know, hellscape that it's Discover into a nice little bubble where they can grow their community dynamically with, with people who like the genres they, they make. Another thing is that larger creators can use a new feature called Creator Picks which is out right now but it's going to be coming into game when this update comes out. And in their creator profiles you can they can elevate smaller creators in the ecosystem who are doing good. And larger audiences who follow the big creators can see the islands of lesser known creators as your followed creators picks will show up and discover giving them more like you know boost in the algorithm. Major dev companies can now grow in the ecosystem too creating high quality experiences as now unlike before it's actually viable. If you want to know more check out my whole video about it but I think this is one of the biggest reasons why the metaverse push failed because of the lack of UGC and metaverse modes of the same or at least professional quality of epics modes that people could play. This could fix that or at least make it hundreds of times better for creators and also players who play the game. Even Battle Royale is starting to see the signs of starting up back again. It's almost like Epic has done a large chunk of the work to set up the metaverse, and now since all those systems are pretty much there, they don't need as much dev power and they can go back to dedicate more resources to Battle Royale and things that matter most. Now also UEFN, according to Epic, will be on par to be able to develop Battle Royale in 2025, or most likely Chapter 7. So most likely over the next year or so, UEFN will be improved enough and Discover will be improved enough to be able to sustain a growing community of creators and of their followers, leaving Epic they go a bit hands off uh, with the development of the systems so they can dedicate that to all the other areas of the game like Battle Royale. Anyways, in conclusion, did Fortnite's metaverse fail? Yeah, to, to, to an extent it did, but in my mind, this was Epic's first attempt at a metaverse, and this won't be their last. The metaverse is not going anywhere, and hopefully it should be only up from here. The pieces that Epic have seen for a while that the community hasn't seen it will fall into place soon. Epic has also been listening to the community. They know what we want and how we feel about the metaverse. Tim Swinney acknowledges it. So in the end, realistically speaking, this isn't the Fortnite I fell in love with. But that doesn't mean any love is lost. The first push for the metaverse failed, but failure is not the end all be all, it's something to be learned from. And I have high doubt Epic learned absolutely nothing from this. Will chapter 6 fix everything? No it won't. Will it be a step in the right direction? What I've seen, hopefully it will be. Anyways, uh, none of this will ever happen unless Epic changes the goddamn loading screen. Please Epic, change it. It's been the same for the past year. Anywho, let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, use my code in the front arm shop and thank you to all of our members of the channel become a member of the Tadabas channel today there's dreamlands dev commentaries coming out every single week anyways watch all these videos up here for more of my commentary videos that's about it i'll see you all around